Hey, welcome Ashley, allthingsenergy.com, and uh, this is, uh, well, you see what you got in front of you, and uh, yep, that's a, uh, that's something you don't want to see in endodontics, uh, but this is a, a case that I just, the, the patient followed up with me a few days ago, and it has some fantastic learning points, so let's get started. So the patient, 29-year-old uh, female, presented uh, to the uh, endodontic clinic in which I was working the chief complaint of I just like my root canal finished uh, that was started two weeks prior so this date that she presented to me uh, so you can see this large um, distal um, carious lesion uh, it was determined that uh, the tooth was uh, required uh, root canal therapy two weeks prior to seeing me so it was initiated by uh, another practitioner So here's how the patient presented um, to me two weeks uh, later, around approximately uh, 24th of January, 2011. And the endoaxis had already been initiated. And if we take a look here briefly, the way um, my endodontic mentor wants us to discuss uh, radiographs. We have a periodic, periodical radiograph of tooth number 3, uh, or tooth number 16, in which we can see uh, part of t the uh, second premolar and a portion, almost all the por of... Uh, entirety of tooth number two, tooth number one seven, except for missing the apical portion here on tooth number seventeen, one, one seven or tooth number two. So uh, the coronal aspect, we have an, a metallic restoration and a non-metallic restoration, most likely some sort, of, sort of Fuji restoration. Uh, the osseous crest is intact. Um, we have uh, limited bone loss, if if any, maybe five percent. Uh, we follow the PDL around the tooth. We have a little bit of widening here, maybe not around the mesobuccal canal, mesobuccal root. Continue a uh, little bit of widening at the apical portion of the distal buccal root. And we continue up. Difficult to see the uh, palatal canal here. It's probably not even in the shot now I look at it. Uh, in intrapulpal, we have uh, some sort of uh, medicament, most likely calcium hydroxide. Okay, so this patient presented me just to finish her root canal there, finish her endodontic treatment. All right, I can do that. Well, maybe not. So, what happened here? Um, we're always using the microscope, so uh, what happened was, uh, well, here we have a working length radiograph with uh, approximately a number 10, 15 file in the mesobuccal uh, canal. And here we have a 10 file not really continuing with the curvature of the root, so I perforate prefer the root at approximately mid-root on the distal buckle. It's painful, um, but we have some excellent learning points from this. So one of the one of the learning points when I was doing this, I remember from an anodontist years ago who taught me, if you think you need a radiograph, take one. Step number one. Well, I needed one. So, how would you repair this and when is the best time? Well, I was asked that question right after I saw this was like okay you know what we're gonna reappoint you for another day so I see I placed a uh, provisional restoration placed calcium hydroxide and sent the patient on her way went to go speak with my endodontic mentor afterwards and he said when do you think the best time to repair a, a uh, root perf is I don't know now there's that pregnant pause kinda like okay I guess I'll go get her so I went and tracked down the patient she's still in the waiting room and we brought her back <coughs> and attempted to place MTA this is the first time that I placed MTA to fix a root perforation so how do you do it well it's fairly straightforward a little tricky uh, here's a radio one radiograph the second one is what you do you can see I have a massive void right there essentially what you do is you take MTA pack it in here and you use your use a K file just to kind of vibrate and carry it down. You can place um, an ultrasonic instrument on the K file or an ITIL, whatever kind of file you want, just to vibrate it down, take a radiograph. If it's not good enough, do it again. Do it again. So um, that's a really easy way to uh, repair that perforation. Okay, so place the res provisional restorative material, brought her back a few weeks later. She was asymptomatic the entire time I've known this patient. Here's a uh, cone check working uh, radiograph. You can see in the mesial buccal canal I have a uh, 
uh, got a perk point and same with the palatal canal and here's the faint out faint outline of the uh, the MTA and the distal buccal canal so we're just going to treat this just you're going to treat the other two canals as a uh, r regular endodontic therapy see some periapical widening right at the uh, top of the the apical portion of the uh, the periapix of the palatal canal <coughs> all right so here's a fill it's a great ready to have to show, especially in shifts, we have a little bit of internal resorption on the mesobuccal canal. And I'm going to click to the next one. You can see that it's always centered whenever you take it. And that's one of the indicators uh, of a internal resorptive process. Um, so let's go back here. So mesobuccal canal comes along here. Boom, done. In palatal canal, you can see that we've extruded some sealer. It probably was, if I can recall, best age plus. This is almost a year ago. And on our distal buccal canal, we have a little bit of apical, apical widening. Otherwise, patient's asymptomatic. So she lives approximately an hour away, so we elected to uh, follow up. She just came in in two months, three months. And then we had, uh, once we were felt that it was fine, three months uh, post-operatively, had a coronal restoration, a definitive coronal restoration placed. So this was her two days ago. Uh, you can see we got some decent uh, healing on the mesobuccal canal. Not a lot of wide. The widening appears compared to this one. See the comparison? So that's one of the things in endo also, comparing between different radiographs. And here we still have some apical widening on the periapex. However, that may be secondary to inflammatory products uh, to the AH+. Let's see. Is that one okay here you can kind of see that here so it might still be just slowing down the healing because of that sealer and then on our distal buckle well here goes the root right here so you can see we still have some um, apical widening so what we're going to do in this case is we're just going to follow her up in six months and in a year and Sort of, if it becomes symptomatic, well, they were either probably retreat or, um, excuse me, surgical root canal therapy. Um, or if this continues, if this does not seem to heal and continues to get bigger, then we'll go with a uh, surgical root canal therapy. So there are two options for this tooth. We can either um, just resect one of these roots, or we can actually sort of resect higher up, more um, coronally, or we can just do a uh, surgical. Uh, apicoactomy approximately here. And that's it. So I hope you uh, learned from this experience. I definitely did myself. Cheers.